Hey guys, it's Kyle Bennett with HardOCP.com and a couple months ago MSI reached out to us and said hey we'd like to sponsor a build video with you and uh, I asked them what they wanted to cover and they said they'd like to cover a Threadripper system. So I was getting ready to build a Threadripper system for myself because I wanted to use one on a daily basis and see how it went and MSI said that's great. Um, We've done a lot of testing with Threadripper in the past, and we've done a tremendous amount of it on this MSI uh, MEG X399 Creation motherboard. So our build is gonna center around that motherboard. We're also gonna put in an MSI Seahawk uh, GeForce RTX 2080, which is a uh, water-cooled card. And we reached out to Corsair for PSU. We're gonna use this RM 1000-watt uh, unit. And we're also gonna be putting in Corsair Vengeance RAM and Corsair MP500 uh, NVMe uh, SSD drives down on the board. Um, we were going to use this Corsair H150 Pro Cooler, but it's a, it's a 360 model that they sent and I don't want to use that in this case. We're going to use the uh, Intermax Liptec uh, TR42, which is our second version of these coolers specifically built for Threadripper. And we're going to put it all in this Corsair Obsidian 500D case, which is uh, actually very, very snazzy. Um, as we move on, I'm probably going to uh, custom water cool this whole thing in a couple of weeks, so we'll see how that goes as well. But, so, we're going to take you through how we build computers here from the ground up. We're not saying this is the only way to do it. We're not even saying this is the right way to do it. We're just telling you this is the way we do it. And... One of the big focus, one of the big focal points that I think is important about building a machine of your own is not setting yourself up for failure. So we're going to do it. We do it a little bit different than other folks. And uh, hey, we'll sit down here at the testing table. We're actually at the testing table. Testing table is back there. We got this table set up. We're not going to use any special tools or anything. We need a trusty Phillips head screwdriver. I like mine magnetized, and uh, maybe a pair of pliers some snips and that would should be about it so uh let's uh, get everything out of the box and we'll start getting this built so getting started with our build first of all you want to have a nice area to work in of course i'm using the table here it's a fairly small table did this on purpose so we facilitate a smaller work area some of you are probably going to do this on the carpet as well i highly suggest you don't do that especially if you live in a uh, area where you have bad static electricity. So we want to address that. So the logical place we'd start would be with the motherboard, right? That's the first thing we want to get out. Actually, no, we do not. What we want to start with is the Corsair RM1000X power supply. And I'm going to explain this to you as we go. So a lot of people will tell you, hey, you need to have your static wristband and all that stuff and be grounded, and, and they'd be correct, especially if you're working in an area that has a, uh, a lot of static electricity. If you walk across the carpet and touch the door handle and uh, you see a one inch spark, then you probably should be concerned about static electricity. I've been working with uh, systems for a long time and never had that much problem in Texas. So, but let me show you, here's our RM1000X from Corsair. Silent operation mode. Comes with a bag of uh, accessory cords. I'm gonna put that for a side right now. And we also have our power cord here. So what we're gonna do, and especially if you're if you're concerned about static, and certainly static can ruin some components very, very quickly. What we're gonna do is we're gonna plug our power supply into the wall, and we're actually gonna turn it on, and that is gonna give us a place to ground. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave this over here to the side, and we're gonna use this, obviously. We're gonna leave it over the side, and before we touch anything in the board, we're gonna ground ourselves to the power supply. It's a really simple thing to do. You're gonna be using the power supply anyway. So you can stick it over there, you can ground yourself and make sure you don't uh, discharge any static in any components you use and tear those up. So now we wanna to move to getting the motherboard out of the box. This is the MSI MEG X399 Creation. We have a lot of experience with this motherboard and have done a lot of testing with it and it has worked out very, very good for us. So this is how our Creation motherboard comes out of the box. Got a nice piece of protective plastic on top. We can put that aside. Also, you want to keep 
all your boxes and everything really tidy right now. All your packaging that everything came in in case we have anything that's DOA so you can be able to easily return this. Um, on this board, you've got a little hole down right here. They like you to open up and twist back out of the way. So on this motherboard, we've got several pieces of plastic to pull off here. You might want to leave these on to last while we're working with it, less fingerprints and all that good stuff. The first thing we're going to do on this board is we're going to install the CPU. Today we've got a Threadripper uh, 2950X that's going to go in the system. And uh, we're going to go over the installation procedure real quick. So when you get your uh, Threadripper, it'll come with this little Torx head tool. You're probably aware of this. And uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to open the number three screw, we're open number two screw, and we're gonna open the number one screw. At that point, this is spring loaded, so this will come up. Now at this point, you see we've got two blue tabs down here. And what we wanna do is we wanna reach, grab a hold of those, and just pull up gently. Here's the other side. So this is uh, what the carrier slides into. So you can see how that flips up here. So this slides out, pulls straight out. These are carrier there. Now this is probably, as far as having any risk involved in this, the, uh, this TR4 socket is incredibly rugged, except for the fact of the pins down actually in the socket. So we've got over 4,000 pins down there. See it says socket SP3, which is the same as TR4 SP3s for server. You see these two tabs right here that say remove. Take this, pull this straight up. I would suggest you take this cover and never try to put it back on again because I've actually bent pins trying to replace this cover. Now, if you do want to take the CPI later, you can always put the uh, plastic carrier body back in. And then you can push it down and obviously it'll cover the pins and keep those safe. So before we go touching our CPU, let's make sure touch our power supply. Make sure we're grounded. We don't carry any static. Open our socket up. This CPU has been used, so this is exactly what one look like new. You can take it out. You don't have to touch the CPU itself. You do want to leave the orange carrier on. Slide that down just a little bit. And it slides right in that carrier. And you'll see the little detents that slides on under the edges right here. Slide all the way down. Take a little push, you'll feel it slide into place, and you'll see these two little feet right here that keep it where it needs to be. Take your two fingers on the blue, press it in the socket. That part is done. So now we're gonna go the opposite way to close. It actually says on here, close, one, two, three, open, three, two, one. So we're gonna press down, take our tool. Now, if you turn it backwards, you'll be able to hear it click right there. Bring it around again. So now we know it's in that socket. This is the way I do it. So put about a half turn on it. Go to the number two, press down. Wait for the click. About a half turn. Go to the number three. About a half turn. So now all three of these screws are started into the threads properly. So this is a torque wrench. And when it gets to the proper designated torque, which is says it right on here, 1.5 Newton meters, so, or 18 foot ounces. You're gonna feel it click. Stop turning at that point. We'll go to number two, click again. We'll go to number three. Now you're done with the actual CPU install itself. This keeps uh, everything safe. Like I said, the most dangerous thing about dealing with these boards is touching the pins. They're like angel hair and you can, uh, you can damage it real quickly. So the quicker you get the CPU in there and covered everything up, the better. So now that we've uh, got our CPU installed, we've got our box back out, emptied it out, got all the accessories out of it. And uh, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use this for a board stand because as I said in the intro, we wanna focus on basically not having any failures along the way. And one of the things that's most frustrating about building a new PC is getting everything put together 
and then something doesn't work and you don't know what it is. So the way we're going to go about this is we're going to basically put together the entire system on our box here, make sure every piece works as we move along, and then we will be able to uh, take it all back apart, put it in our case. Uh, it makes, makes, it's, it's a couple extra steps, but it makes diagnosing issues so much easier at the end of that. So we got our empty box back out, got our motherboard out, use it for a stand here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook our power supply up over here. We've got our uh, 24 pin header. We've got a PCIe for video card. We have our two uh, 12 volt eight pin connectors, which go on this board right here. And we're actually gonna put the cooler on too. And uh, once we get all that done, we'll talk about uh, updating the BIOS and moving forward once we know everything works. So what we're gonna do next is we got our power up. We're gonna take one stick of RAM. We're gonna put it in the slot furthest from here. You notice RAM's got a little notch in it. Line up the notch, insert it, push down to you click. Might push on that, make sure it's in there, see if it's seated. Doesn't hurt just to wiggle a little bit, make sure they're seated. Now I'm, I've got this other video card we're gonna use here real quick for this test. Since the other video card is water cooled, it just makes this a little bit easier for filming here with you guys to make this test go easy. All right, so at this moment, we're just looking to see to make sure the system post, that our board's good. And so we've got a monitor hooked up. We're gonna turn the power supply on. So our power light come on here. Now we do not have a cooler on here. Obviously we don't wanna run this system too long, correct? So but we just wanna see if it posts before we go to the problem of installing the heat sink and everything else. And now we know whether or not the board works. So let's see where we go. And if you, I've run these Threadripper CPUs long enough. You could actually let it run till it overheats. It'll turn itself off. Obviously, we don't suggest doing that. So let's see if we get post. So you see our codes over here scrolling through. It's moving forward. And she turned off. Nope, she just spun the fan down. CPU still cool. So we just got signal to the monitor. And there we go, we got post screen and everything looks good. So we can turn it off. So now we know the motherboard's good. All right, so we've saved ourselves a lot of headache installing all this, figuring everything out in case we have problems down the line. So let's get everything back off the board and we'll move to the next step. So we're gonna get ready to put our cooler on now. I found that it's easier to install the coolers on these boards than install the motherboard into the case. Um, some of these coolers can be a little bit difficult to install. You may choose to do it differently, that's fine. I just like doing it this way better. Um, to install these coolers on this TR4 socket, you have four post little mount here. These are threads right here. And you notice these are offset. These are further apart than these two down here. So it's impossible to put it together incorrectly. So we've cleaned our CPU off really well. We used a lint-free cloth, some isopropyl alcohol, wiped this down really good. When you do that, you wanna make sure that the board's not under power, of course. Got that surface nice and clean. Ours is a little bit stained from using it. It's had a mini coolers on and off of it. So when it comes to laying down your thermal interface material or TIM onto your Threadripper, these things are, can be very, very picky. I will link a, a video below about installation of TIM alone and I've done hundreds and hundreds of these installs now, and we found what we think works best. Uh, okay, so we're getting ready to install the cooler before we put it in the case. We've already got Tim down. Like I said, we linked that in the description. So our cooler only fits on this way. So say this is the, uh, here's our IO panel right here. So this will be the top of our case at this end. So our cooler is gonna sit down right here. So our radiator, 
remove this down. So you need to visualize what's going on here. So we've got a cooler sitting here. So our radiator is either going to go this way. Our radiator is going to go this way. Now my personal preference going in this case is to probably move things back over here to get them out of the way a little bit. Now you may want to be uh, showing off the pretty um, chrome pieces on there, accents. So you may want to do it this way, which is fine, but you just need to make up your mind one way or another because when you mount the fans onto your radiator here, you've got your fan leads and you just want to mount those to the back, right? So you want to mount those to the back so you can drop them down tight. You just want to make sure when you put your fans on, you don't have the leads hanging down in front. So just save you a step. Just visualize exactly how you're going to do it before you get there so you can decide which way you want to go. Okay, so I've decided how I want my fans oriented. Intermax does a nice job of putting vibrational, uh, anti-vibration strips on there as well as on the corners of these fans. So I'm going to lay mine out this way where I get both pigtails coming off the fan together so I can put those together nicely. The uh, hardware uses this longer screw. It's done in uh, black chrome and it lines up nicely. So we're going to put the fans on. So when you tighten these down, you'll see them pull down into the rubber there a little bit. Obviously, you don't want to put them too tight. I put them until they just start to press into the rubber a little bit. So there we are. Our fans are on our cooler. Nice and neat. And we'll talk to you a little bit more about the size in a minute. So to mount our uh, Intermax Lick Tech 2, come with these little standoffs. One goes in each post hole. You just need to go hand tight. All right, so we got those in, double check, they're nice and hand tight. So our cooler will only go on one way. Um, this actually, let me show you this real quick. The footing on these actually snaps out. Okay, this is to uh, be able to use the cooler for other configurations, other different, different motherboards. So just make sure that that's in there well. It's got a detent pin in there that holds it in there. Okay, so we're going to lay it down. You cannot put it on wrong, but what we do want to make sure and do is remove this. All right, that's a bad deal to leave that on. So we don't have to worry about cleaning that surface after that. So we're lined up on our holes. Down there down there try to want to keep the pressure off these feels good feels flat so we want to hand thread on our little bolts that come with this kit so just screw that one down till it touches i'm going to screw this one down till it touches Just touching, not putting any pressure at all yet. That one's down. This one's down. All right, try to get the pressure off your lines here. Make sure it's not pulling too bad. Let me see. All right, now you want to go, we're going to do crisscross. Except we're not going to do crisscross. We're going to actually do both of them at one time and try to keep equal pressure at all the corners and you'll be able to feel it just turn a little bit there that was loose there we go so now we're starting to get good tension across all four bolts and these have knurls so these are thumb screws so you can you can turn these fairly easily All right, once they get good and tight, go back with our screwdriver. One turn, one turn, one turn, one turn. It's extremely important because of the size of the integrated heat spreader on the thread ripper that you take your time here and do this evenly. Otherwise, you will not get a good seat. So there's one turn, one turn. One turn. All 
All right, once it feels like it's starting to bottom out. And don't worry, I mean, you don't, obviously you don't want to crank on these things. Okay, this one just hit, this one just bottomed out. Oh, I was about to turn behind that one, so that's good. Let's go over here. One, two, we'll turn. Okay, that one just bottomed out. So let's see. About a half turn there. So good. We did really good. We got pretty much everything laid down evenly, which is what you want to what you want to focus on. Okay. So now we have our cooler installed, or our cooler installed on our motherboard. We want to go back and now we want to start building up our system again. We are going to use a Corsair MP500 480 gig drive. Actually, we're going to put four of these down on this motherboard, which will be interesting. Um, so we need to pull our heat sinks off, our Frozo, our Frozo covers. I don't exactly know the branding on that. So we need to pull all that off. To pull these covers off, you will need a smaller screwdriver. The uh, standard screwdriver I use for uh, case screws is too big. It's just way too big. So you have to have a smaller screwdriver for that. One of the uh, stays did come out with this as well. So we got our uh, MSI uh, Frozor heat sinks off for M.2 devices. We're going to set those out of the way, put those over here for a moment. And so we unpackaged our Corsair MP500 uh, NVMe SSD drive which is right here. So as you see, we've got place to mount uh, SSD here, SSD here, and SSD here. Okay, so these, SSD, these SSDs come in different form factors and lengths. And uh, so you'll see right here, we've got this standoff that is, if you look, that's where our drive would plug in. So that standoff, is in the middle of our drive right there. So obviously you don't want that pushing up into the bottom of your drive. Now when I took the uh, heat sink off, there was one here also, but it just happened to uh, come out. So we need to unscrew this one because you don't want that laid under there. In fact, we can just move that one here. Sausage fingers not helping. Finally got it started. So again, just finger tight. You don't need to screw these in that hard. So we go to plug this in, you hold it at a bit of an angle and you'll notice that it's keyed. You cannot put it in incorrectly. And slide that in there, give it a little push. You'll feel it set in and then it'll just hang there like that. It's like a little dive board. All right, so we come back over, we get our other screw. It's got the fat little collar on it, which is gonna fit right in that gap there. So we can push this down and now you see how that all lines up really nice and neat right there again nimble fingers would be great here and there we go we got it started so there we go we got that in there so also we have our places for other two drives which we're going to mount in a minute but again so we're looking at least points of failure here so at this point we're going to get our uh, box back out i'm going to set everything up i'm going to make sure all of our ram works we'll make sure the cooler works We'll make sure our drives work. We'll make sure everything works before you start installing all this. And I'm just telling you, it's, it's the way to go. You wanna, be, you wanna put it together one time in that case. So we're installing our Corsair Vengeance LPX. Um, we wanna install, we've got quad channel memory, of course. So we need four sticks of RAM at, at a minimum to take advantage of that. Um, you wanna install in A2, B2, C2, and D2 which is generally the way it goes on all these motherboards. And that is generally skip one, install, skip one, install. So you end up with the, uh, the furthest away populated slot being installed and the second furthest being empty. And the third, well, I guess that's the wrong way to say that. Then a, then a space in between. So again, ease up, push them in, easy. You can always 
ask the manual, the manual will give you a layout, but this is generally how it works with every motherboard, Intel or AMD. Okay, so we've got our system set up for test run number two here. So what have we done differently from the last time? Obviously we have the cooler installed, which uh, of course we wanna see if it works before we get all this back in the case, because those things are bare to get in and out. Uh, we have installed the full RAM set. So we got our four sticks of RAM in, and we have put our Corsair MP500 drive down on the board. So that's all we've changed at this point. So as you see, we're moving forward a little bit by little bit. Now let's see what happens. We get power, give it a second, and let's see if we get post. Our post codes are rolling, so that's good. And I just picked this video card out of the box, so I didn't realize it was so loud I wouldn't have used it. Both our fans spun up. We're good there. While that sounds really bad, that's the uh, video card cycling. It has nothing to do with the system itself. Okay, we do have a post, so that's good. It says devices are changed, so I'm going to hard power down right here. Okay, turn power off again. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, uh, and obviously if this is your only system you're building, you'd want to do this beforehand. I'm going to, um, I'm going to download the newest BIOS because I seriously doubt this has the newest BIOS on it. So I'll download the BIOS, I'll reflash the BIOS, and uh, then I'm going to uh, get into the BIOS, and we'll check uh, temps and everything else and see if we're ready to move forward from there. So as you see on our screen, we've selected mFlash. See our processor is appropriately uh, shown. We've got all of our RAM. The BIOS build date is 8.9 on this one. Uh, looking on the website, there's one due on 8.15. So we're gonna select uh, mFlash and hit enter. And it'll ask you, hey, yeah, we wanna do that. So the MSI board is one of the few boards that does reboot. We're starting to see more of those do now, do uh, the reboot now to go into the BIOS, but it's just kind of one of those things. So here we are after it rebooted, we're back into the MSI mFlash program. There is our, uh, I'm using a USB stick. So there's a version of 1.2. So key over, select it. There's our build date 11.13. Enter. You sure you want to do that? Yes. And your BIOS is updating. So uh, I won't bore you with all this. Uh, it'll go through and restart and I'll uh, show you what we get after that. Okay, so we got our BIOS updated. We're up to our BIOS build date, 1114, 1.2 version, right CPU, right motherboard. So you see our CPU temps 29, our motherboard temps 29. That's telling me we got a really good seat on the uh, cooler, so I'm not too worried about that. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and install Windows, and uh, we'll discuss a little bit more why about that in a second. So of course, walk out of the room for 10 seconds, go check things, I come back. And I'm getting computers restarted, unexpected encountered error, blah, blah, blah. It just goes into an endless loop. Said to use Shift F10 to go back into uh, open a uh, command window. And uh, H key local machine, system setup status, child completion. Need to change the setup value to three. And uh, hopefully that will solve our problem, but I'm not sure why we're having it to begin with. So we'll see. Hey, so that's something good to see, right? We like seeing that. And uh, let's cut back over here to our system. So uh, looking up that uh, error online, uh, it seems like it's been a common thing. I've never run into it before. That quick reg edit we did uh, got everything fixed. As you see now, we can actually sit here and talk by the computer now that other card's gone. We've got the uh, MSI Seahawk in here. See the leads here and our radiator right back here already hooked up. Uh, so we got that running. So that's one more piece we checked out. We got the signal off it. Now before I plug any of this into the network, what we're gonna do is I like, I download, so this being an AMD board, I download the AMD drivers directly from AMD. 
Uh, that way you get the latest ones that are out. Uh, then uh, the, um, the rest of your motherboard drivers, I went to MSI, grabbed those off that site. And obviously I got the latest uh, GeForce uh, 2080 drivers directly from their site. So before I plug into any network or anything else, I'm gonna load the drivers up on the board and then we'll go back and take a look at the device manager and see where we sit. Okay, so we installed all of our drivers and coming back here, we're looking on device manager and everything is working. We don't have any problems with any devices on the board. So at this point, we're really good with knowing everything on the board's working. Um, so we're looking at the board here, we've got the Seahawk in, we've got our uh, cooling in, got a RAM in. The only thing left to install are our two extra drives and to get this on the case. So, I mean, my mic is right up next to the system right now. We have not touched any of, um, any of the fan profiles or anything. So that's how silent this system runs, sitting out of the case in front of me. So once we get it in the case, it, it should be near silent. This uh, Seahawk does have a uh, blower fan on it as well to uh, cool the uh, VRMs and the RAM. So uh, we'll have to see how that works out under load. But uh, so let's uh, get the other Corsair uh, MP500s on here and make sure those work and then we'll move forward. So we got our other uh, Corsair MP500 480 gig NVMe SSD drives. Um, you do want to check again. We got one going here and one going here. You want to make sure that those uh, standoffs for those are properly positioned. That plugged in. That one lays down right. I'm going to plug this one in as well. Of course, I suggest you don't have any power going to the board when you do this. We do have uh, thermal padding on the back of these. You could argue whether or not you need to take these uh, branding strips off here. I'm personally not that worried about it. There we go. Clicked into place, took a second there. Everything lines up well. Oh, that one lined up good. Got that one started. So that one's bottomed out. You don't, again, don't need to put a lot of force on these. Okay, so those are all seated down nice and neat. Now, because we're terribly anal retentive about this and want to make sure it works when we get it inside the case, we're going to do one more test run and just make sure we can see those drives. Got our new uh, drives in. They formatted out to 447 gigabytes each. Volume D and volume E. And there's our uh, C drive. So everything's looking really, really good. Both those worked. So now we're ready to start putting everything into the case. So we're uh, breaking everything down. We're going to move into the case next. Since these are underneath our video card, we're going to peel the plastic off those. And uh, one thing I've noticed while I've been using the system here and plugging it and unplugging it is that, so let me bring you in tight. These are our, our two 12 volt uh, eight pin connectors here. And you can see that on these plugs, this one's got this ridge on the back of it and it's actually pressing against this other 12 volt plug over here. So there's, they're a little bit close together for the ends we have on this. Um, I don't like it because I can actually see pressure spreading those apart a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a razor knife and just trim that back tab off that plug and that'll alleviate the pressure in there. I don't want that board getting really hot with a pressure being applied on it like that. So here's the ridge I was talking about on the back of this plug. And what this is, is this is um, a little fitting that allows these to uh, bind together. Um, so if I take this off, which I am, um, these won't stay connected. You'll have basically two four pins, which is not that big a deal because obviously you have plugs or you have uh, clasps on both sides of that that'll uh, keep everything seated down in there well. So using the razor knife, I was able to actually leave a bit of that on. So it's actually still working to keep it together. And now it fits right down in there and you can actually see a, see a hair, hair of space in between them. So now these plugs aren't pressing apart on each other. So this is the Corsair Obsidian Series 500D case. Um, I really like the looks of this case. It's considered a mid tower. It's still a, still fairly large. Um, it's got a, uh, doors on both sides that are glass tempered. So, uh, there's two screws back here. 
a screw right here and a screw right here, which I've already removed. And for sake of uh, moving this around better, we're gonna remove these glass panels real quick to keep from breaking those or damaging anything else or damaging the hinges in case those start swinging around while we're moving this case around. So we've got two case fans that come installed. We're gonna move those around a little bit. We'll show you what we're gonna do. We've got uh, all of our uh, front panel connectors there. We've got hidden um, PSU there, obviously. All of our standoffs for the motherboard are already mounted, which is nice. Nothing terribly, you know, it's nothing crazy. Um, this one does allow for us to do a uh, side-facing video card, and we'll, I think we're gonna set that up too. So the case, even with the doors off, feels really, obviously this table's moving a little bit, but I put this down the floor a while ago, feels really stable. So behind the second door over here, we've got our uh, accessories here. We'll get those out in a minute. So we've got one, two, three, four, uh, two and a half inch hard drives, or SSDs rather, and we have two places here for spinning disc as well. So you can mount 360 radiator here. You can mount 240 or 280 radiator here. Then obviously we could uh, mount a uh, 140 back here. So, and that's actually what we're gonna do since we're gonna put our video card there. So on the front, still got the protective uh, plastic on all this. So it's kinda, wanna keep that there so we don't scratch it up. We've got a power button, reset button, uh, 3.1 USB. This does have um, a type C connector up front as well as mic and uh, headphones up there. So everything's looking pretty good. So let's, uh, let's start getting the system in the case. So the first thing we're gonna do since we are prepped, we've already got our cooling system down. We're going to uh, remove the bracket here at the top. The case is actually upside down right now. You're looking at the top of it. And I want to put our radiator there. I don't, for this setup that we're doing, so we're, like I said, I'm probably gonna to move to a custom water cooling here in a bit. I wanted to see how this cooler worked. I wanted to give it a go around. Intermax has had some issues with these coolers, so I wanted to actually use one for a while and see how it works. So I don't like, especially on these thread rippers, because they're just, there's so much wattage. So instead of a, uh, Instead of having it pull cold air from inside, I wanted to have it push all the hot air out. So I want to use our radiators as an exhaust. So we got our bracket out and we'll get our cooler or we'll get our radiator mounted to that. And then we'll be able to, this is keyed, slides right back in. And then we'll be able to lock it down and it'll be nice and neat. So we got everything laid out here like it would actually sit in the motherboard. Here's our IO panel. So we got our pigtails on the back of there. So our radiator is going to fix to the panel like that. Take a quick second, visualize, make sure everything's where you want it to be. Now we can go ahead and lock this down. Getting those thread ripper coolers on with a really good seat while it's uh, hanging in the case or even laying flat can, can be a pain in the butt. So, I mean, you may choose to install the cooler last, which uh, is certainly your prerogative. Okay, so there's our last screw on this. We did get a little bit of panel flex um, due to these anti-vibrational strips that are under here. So we did have, I did have a little bit of give. I could feel a little bit. Uh, I don't think it's gonna cause us problems. Corsair has anti-vibrational strips at the edges of these as well. So I think when we get it all locked down, I think we'll be just fine. If I line it up and look, it's got a tiny bit of bow to it this way from tightening it down, or I guess like, the, yeah, what am I trying to show you? Like that, from tightening it down, but uh, I don't think you can see it on camera, it's so slight. So now we can get all this uh, slipped in there. So getting prepared to install the board, we had this case fan back here, so I went ahead and removed it. Uh, we took the bracket out from in front of the case here, which had our one case fan on it. I installed the, uh, the case fan from back here, here, or we can drop this back in after we get our board mounted. We're gonna get that out of the way for right now. So before we get started, this, uh, this uh, MSI MEG X399 Creative actually does not come with a built-in I.O. shield. So remember to put that in. Of course, I know none of you have ever 
put together a case or put the motherboard down in there then realized you didn't have the IO shield in there. So okay, we got that there. So I'm gonna attempt to do this by myself. Now I might need another set of hands. We're gonna see how this goes. But so, get the motherboard in. Let's get it laid down. So I'm holding, I got the rest of this in the other hand here. It's okay. So that lines up nicely. We're not binding there. Let's see. So, I can actually set that down right there. Perfect. And uh, so I'm gonna get my case screws out of the accessory pack. And uh, I'm actually gonna put uh, a few down so our motherboard remains stable right there. So the uh, 500D from Corsair comes. It's got a lot of uh, black uh, screws to put our motherboard down with. Uh, so we got uh, mounts for two and a half SSDs. It does come complete with a, a longer set of screws for mounting uh, case fans as well. Comes with a bunch of little rubber grommets you can use for, uh, I guess you could use these for wiring back through the motherboard. I'm not sure exactly where these are to be used, but we'll figure that out. Uh, got a number of shorter uh, case fan screws and a number of uh, smaller screws, extra standoff in case you lose one. So our motherboard's down in here good. So let's uh, get this all screwed down. So we went back and we uh, mounted our uh, radiator back to our bracket that goes to the front of our case here. And uh, all that sits in there good. So just test fit that in there. Get our leads back over out of the way. We'll rerun those in a minute. So they're neat. So that sits there fine. Yep. And now we can come back and do our case fans. We take up here, and we got plenty of clearance there this time. So this is a this is a bit unconventional in how I'm doing this. This case is actually fits under my desk, and the desk is built in the wall, so there's zero ventilation out the back of the case, um, and fairly for the not a whole lot out of the top. So it's, it's got a little bit of room. So I'd like to put as little heat out of the back of the case as possible. And so I'm going to use these as exhaust fans. So these will be pushing out the front of the case. We set these up to be intake fans. So looking at mounting our Seahawk, MSI Seahawk card, if we go right there, it really doesn't matter which way we go. We looked at, uh, I looked at taking the leads and actually setting this up as an exhaust fan right now. And if we go in the third PCI slot, which is by 16, those leads are they're just almost long enough to go out the front as well. But it's it's just they're, if they were an inch longer, I could exhaust everything out of the front of the case, and then it wouldn't be putting any heat underneath my desk and not actually venting out to the room. Uh, but since those leads aren't long enough, we're going to go ahead and install the uh, radiator for the uh, MSI Seahawk 2080 here and I'll have to exhaust out of the back of the case. So we're gonna, I'm gonna run this for a while and we'll see how it goes. And honestly, I don't know what to expect. Um, like I said, I'm gonna run this for a while, which I wanted to use it under AIO. Uh, All-in-one coolers, the way I always see them, I don't like using them for intake fans. I just don't because I think one of the biggest benefits in AIO coolers are the fact that you can exhaust all the heat outside of the case itself without dumping any of that in here. And of course, I'd like to keep this motherboard as cool as possible. These things do get hot under load. And uh, actually using these as intake fans right here will work really well because we'll get direct airflow back over our uh, VRMs down on the motherboard. So that, that works out really well. So then we'll have, uh, we'll have exhaust here and we'll have exhaust here. Um, so while I'm gaming, that 2080 is probably gonna dump a lot of heat under my desk. Quite frankly, the way it's set up right now, it does the same. If I go back and water cool this, I will, uh, I'll run a loop on the card on the uh, 2080. If I water cool, I'll probably put a 2080 Ti in here and uh, we'll water cool and I'll use the, whole, the front for exhaust on all three. That way I'd have leads long enough to uh, be able to custom plumb it all into one radiator, 360 on there as well. So we ran our leads 
from our uh, two intake fans right there. We're going to run those back behind the motherboard. And these simply attach back with a thumb screw right there at each corner. So we want to get our radiator it's mounted back here in the front. We're going to our fan leads to that opening right there. We're going to run those back to the motherboard. Let's get that out of the way. So again, this is keyed. into that slot and that slot so we're good there again we've got thumb screws one thing I do wish this uh, this lick tech had was a uh, I wish it had um, swivels this is gonna this is probably gonna rest against the door here once we get it heat cycled we can uh, we can probably move these around a little bit to make them see they swivel this way Maybe we can, I don't know, once we get them heat cycled, I guess they'll, they'll, we can probably get them to lay in there like that. It won't be so bad, but we'll have to see. So the next thing we're gonna do is get our uh, power supply in. This is the uh, RM1000X. And uh, obviously we've got this nice channel here to lay it down into. So I've got all my connectors that I already need. I've got everything for, I got our two CPU leads, our 24 pin lead. I have two PCI leads on here. And I also have two SATA connector leads already on here because getting in there to plug these in once you get it in that little slot is, is fairly difficult so bend these over don't force them right but they they have enough wire at the end so they will fold over i'm just going to set it down in here Let's see she should slide down right there and we're going to set it up so we can uh, screw it in So now we got everything in, we got our leads for our fans, leads for our radiator fans, and obviously we have our leads off our power supply. And Corsair does supply us with a nice channel back here. So we can remove that and we can still use these grommets to run a all of our cords uh, back to our motherboard. So we're gonna take some time, and obviously we're not gonna sit here and show you all this. We're gonna sit down and uh, take our time doing some cable management to try to make it look as nice as we possibly can. So our cabling turned out pretty well. Um, one thing to keep in mind is this uh, 500D Corsair case is not specced for a, an E-ATX board. And the uh, MSI uh, X399 creation is very much an E. ATX board or extended ATX board. You can see where we have the overlap here on some of the grommets and uh, we got really tight on this uh, this front 3.1 USB connection. We're a little bit tight on the C port connection here but that came out all right. Um, all the cabling from the bottom we got all of our front uh, panel headers hooked up our audio hooked up. We're able to keep that nice and out of the way. Um, the uh, one thing that's kind of rough about this uh, PSU, this, this um, RM1000X, is you've got these capacitors that are down on the uh, that are down on the ends of the cable, so you can't really do any tight bends with those. But so we got our uh, our case fans up here, our intake fans are plugged in here. We've got our pump running to our pump header. Obviously, our uh, rad radiator fans plugged in here. So we, we did okay, so uh, let's take a look at the back of it. So here's the rear of our box. Corsair does have this channel cover. It comes down over here, so the back of it looks a little bit nice. Um, due to how much cabling we had to use, because we were using an EATX board, so I had to strap these down. So that cover was not able, the cover wasn't big enough to fit over that. But we've got everything nice and tight down through here. I do have uh, cables in here for SATA power and a SATA power over here so we'll be able to put the, we'll be able to fill these drive bays up as well so everything else tucked away pretty good obviously there's a door on the back here it's not uh, exactly what you'd want to see in a door but I think we'll be all right that side's against the wall anyway so I'm not really concerned about it so the cabling while be it albeit tight we uh, we got it all to fit in there so we're looking good there 
So when you open up the uh, MSI MEG X399 Creation motherboard, you will find this inside. It says arrow on it. Looks like a video card. It's even got a PCIe plug on it, six pin. Turn it over and you'll see that it says uh, M.2 Expander Arrow. And uh, what this is, is a um, PCIe card for uh, M.2 drives, which you might have guessed from the name. Um, so I've already installed this, but I'll show you real quick what this is all about. So you get four screws on the back. This is what you find inside. So we've got this uh, big heat sink up here. You see we have a uh, thermal padding. And uh, so what we have here is uh, two M.2 drives. I had two extras laying around. I had an 860 and a 970 Evo. And uh, so what we did was place these down. So what this card does is give us expansion slots. So out of the box, the, the X399 Creation can handle seven total M.2 drives, all of which are uh, connected directly to the uh, PCIe lanes on the, um, on the CPU, on the Threadripper. So this goes in um, a by 16 slot. And so that gives you a by four on each one of these. So we're gonna install that as well. And uh, let me get this uh, all put back together. So next we get the uh, MSI Seahawk uh, 2, uh, 2080, RTX 2080 installed. And before we do that, we've got a, lot of, uh, got a lot of stickers here to take off, protective coverings. And if you've installed this without taking these off first, I don't think you would be able to easily get this off because these are on here extremely well. It's like they put down this, uh, they put the shroud on after they laid down this and it's like pinched at the bottom there. That's, this is upsetting. This needs to be corrected by MSI. So I think we need to uh, take that shroud off. Let's just see real quick. I think we can uh, get this off without too much hassle. Okay, let's see how this comes off. So we do have a little bit of wiring down on here. Oh wow, so this is actually... So this protective cover is actually wrapped around the block all the way down the side of the water block. So yeah, they need to correct this in manufacturing because there's, no there's no way to get that off reliably without taking that cover off. It's a pretty simple design. Just gives us some airflow across the uh, MOSFETs, VRM out the back. Very interesting. I did notice when this was sitting on the bench uh, running, it was just tremendously cooler on the back plate than what we've seen on the others. I need to make sure that that stays taped down so it stays away from that fan. Okay, I think our fan is clear of our wires. All these screws do have blue thread locker on them as well. It's all locked down really well. Make sure don't have any fan noise. So awesome, got that done. Like I said, we'll talk to MSI about that and making sure they get that fixed. So we're getting the uh, Seahawk ready to go in. Um, also this, this uh, the 500D does support, we talked about this earlier, uh, mounting your video card vertically right here so you can see it out of the side of the case. But what does not come uh, with the 500D is actual the, uh, the PCI uh, bridge that you need to do that. So I didn't order that. I figured it would be in the case, but it is not. So we'll have to follow up if we want to do that. We'll have to do that on our own. So we should just, it's amazing how light this card is. So I've been handling so many of the FEs, the air cooled cards, and they're just I'm like, just hugely, this is so light. Yeah, she's wanted a little push. I like the fact they left the edge cut away here so you can go straight down on your screws. So we're locked in, solid. There we go. Feels good. So now we need to get this radiator mounted. Let's see. All right, so our card's in. We need to get a radiator down in here. I want to keep our inlet and our outlet at the bottom of the radiator. I don't want to leave it where it could cavitate any air at the top. 
I'd rather have it trapped at the top than running through the pump. So do this. We got a little twist in our lines there. That shouldn't be any problem. Let's uh There we go. Still got we got good play there. I don't necessarily like the way that looks, but I'm not sure we got a whole lot of choice in that because that's only it's the only place we have to put it. So here's our Aero expander card. We want to drop this in slot number four, which was our other. Uh, this is slot number four right here. So that's our other. This uh this one's a by eight, so this is a by sixteen. Okay, let's see here. Slots are nice and tight on this board. Not that we really need this other nut in there, but I like uh, putting them back in there if I can. Keeps me from losing them later. All right, so the last thing we gotta do is run our cabling for our uh, PCI Express devices. Now this is where I don't really like, uh, I wish they give you more choice in some of these, because now we, we got all this cabling we have to use for this one little attachment here. And it's just gonna be, it's gonna be bad looking. This is just all it comes down to. No, I'm not gonna like that. So I will. Uh, I'm gonna fiddle around with this, and I'll get this wrapped up nice, and uh, then I'll give you a shot after that. All right. So we got a radiator in, got a card in, uh, our 2080 card in, got the arrow card in, got these wired up. With these wire ends, you know, it is what it is. They're a little bit unruly uh, on a on a PSU of this magnitude, and since these have the capacitors on the ends, uh, that makes it a little more difficult. Of course, this thing's just screaming for a custom uh, power cabling. So, I think we're pretty much buttoned up here. So, if we've done everything correct, we uh, we should be able to turn it on and see what happens. So, let's uh, get it running. So, uh, before we crank her up, let's uh, get that out of the way so we get a little airflow. Turn on the power supply. So what do you think of the chances of it starting? So in the background over there is the uh, monitor it's attached to, the monitor on the uh, right. There we are back at our Windows splash screen and we've got our desktop loaded. I did change the uh, background there to black. That's why you see the change there. But you can obviously see the icons on the desktop. So swinging back over here at the box, Everything looks good. Uh, we'll obviously do some stress testing with this, um, but troubleshooting along the way and uh, verifying all of our components uh, definitely paid off as everything came out really, really well in the end. So if you've made it this far in the video, you've probably got more patience than I do. Um, was really interesting doing this. Uh, I have not, I've not, I've not ever done this. I've had a lot of people ask us to do it. And when MSI came to us and said, hey, I'd like to sponsor video, they said, hey, let's do a build. And I was like, sure. And they gave us no guidelines. So the, the way I went about things today was uh, exactly the way that I build my own systems when we do build systems. And I've built enough systems in the past to, to learn that when you get to the end and you hit the power button and nothing happens, it's just one of those things that is so hard to troubleshoot. So kind of the steps we take, and obviously you could, you could change up some things, um, the steps we take are really, we troubleshoot as we go. So if you find a bad component or something that's incompatible, you can try to figure those things out before you get to the end and have it all stuffed inside the case. And you know, then it's just a, it's, it's a huge problem to pull all that stuff out and troubleshoot. So if you troubleshoot all the way up to the build, um, I think that's the way to do it. I spent 10 hours shooting this, and of course I'm dealing with the camera, I'm the only one working the camera, so I'm doing camera and all kinds of other things. Um, so I think you can go through this build process and get this done in six to eight hours if you really just sat down and, and grinded it out. And uh, as you saw, we ended up, we got everything in the case, we hit the button and everything worked. Um, I checked every port on the system. The only thing that is not working is, well there's two things that are not working. The uh, USB type C connector, on the front panel of the 500D is seems to not be working. I tried checking it with my phone. I'll have to dig more into that. I don't know if I'm missing a driver. We haven't done driver updates on this. Um, and the, uh, what else? Oh, the uh, second um, SATA M.2 drive that we put down 
on the Aero M2 card, the MSI Aero card, uh, it did not show either in Device Manager. That said, that drive has been sitting on my workbench for probably a year. I don't even know if it works. So I don't know, I'll have to look a little more into that. Obviously the card did. Um, the only thing immediately I did not like was that arrow card was kind of loud. So I don't know if I can access a fan profile on there or not to calm that down. I probably can, I'll just have to look and see. Uh, we haven't done that yet. So one of the things we didn't talk about when we started was what tools we used. And quite frankly, I didn't know what tools we were gonna need. So I didn't wanna give you a list at the front and go, hey, this is what you're gonna need and then change it at the end. So I kept my tools out as I went. So I used a tape measure when we ran into the uh, bumps as far as the radiator being too big to uh, access the heat sink. And I eyeballed that to begin with and I thought we had enough room, but that's, so that's on me. I did use a flashlight while uh, doing some cabling. Let's see. We also used the uh, Threadripper uh, torque tool which obviously comes with Threadripper. I did use a pair of pliers to uh, loosen some of those bolts that uh, the hold downs for the SSD drives. I did use a razor knife uh, basically for unpacking and I did have to trim that one uh, lead on the power supply that was causing my uh, those uh, 12 volt uh, eight pins to split apart. I didn't like the pressure they were putting on the PCB. So we trimmed those up and they fit nice and neat now and it's no real big deal. Uh, I did also use some zip ties that weren't included. I wanted some bigger ones for the back of there. And of course, we used two screwdrivers. So we used a, a regular, uh, this is actually my favorite screwdriver for working on computers right here. It's almost the only one you'll ever need. Like I said, it's magnetized, it makes things really easy. Uh, the smaller screwdriver, you did need it for some of the small screws that were down on the heat sinks on the M.2 drives on the uh, uh, X399 Creation. And I also needed this to take apart the uh, shroud off of the uh, MSI Seahawk, Seahawk RTX 2080 um, because of the uh, protective covering that was left on there when they put the shroud down. So as far as running into problems during the whole build, that's that's really it. The we had to trim that connector. The, uh, uh, the radiator issue was my fault. And keep in mind, we are cramming an EATX board into an ATX case. It's not really meant to do what we're doing it with, but I wanted the size. And I'm gonna start using this system this week and I'm gonna transition over to it and uh, see how Threadripper fits in with my workload. So we wanna thank uh, MSI for supplying us the uh, X399 Creation as well as the MSI GeForce RTX 2080 Seahawk. I'm using a, um, I'm using a 2080 FE in my uh, own system right now, and uh, it's really great to game on. Think of, you know, NVIDIA is what NVIDIA is, but they still build some cards if you can afford them. Um, I'd also like to say thank you to Corsair. When um, MSI said, hey, we wanna do this, I'm like, hey, Corsair's been with us for a long time. They've been an advertiser on Hard OCP forever. I'd like to give them the ability to come in here and finish up um, where MSI doesn't cover, and they pretty much covered everything. Uh, they did actually cover the cooler as well. Um, for that H150i Pro cooler we have, they do make a adapter plate for it to fit the socket TR4. Um, I lost it somewhere, or they didn't send it, I don't know what happened. Uh, so the Intermax LickTech 2 was the only one we've had here. Uh, I also wanted to use the Intermax LickTech 2 because there's been, they had, they had some issues with the first run and I wanted to actually use one before we actually went and reviewed it and uh, get a couple months on it and see if we had any issues with it. So it looked to be cool and really good out of the gate and uh, so we'll put it through its paces. So that's it. I'm gonna stick this under the desk and I'm gonna transition uh, my workload over to the Threadripper this week, the 2950X and we'll see how it goes. And uh, Hit up the forums if you got any questions, comments, and God, I know I know there's going to be comments. <laughs> there's probably gonna be a lot of comments, but like I said, that's how I build a system. That's not necessarily how you have to build a system, uh, but uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we can share some things and learn a little bit from each other. Anyway, this is Kyle Bennett with hardocp.com. Thank you.